There you go. Well, hello everybody, Mubuhai to the Philippines, friends. It is a hot day, but storm clouds, it seems to be like that pretty much every day. So you have to take advantage of the times the sun comes out. Each late the afternoon to evening, it's getting super, super stormy, lots of rain, but uh, the mornings seem to be really nice. I love it here. So today's episode, we're gonna talk about something uh, that we had thought about all along. Are we gonna live on an island? Are we gonna live in a rural area? Are we gonna live in a big city? Now, in Canada, we already lived in a big city. We lived in a 44th floor skyscraper type condo unit, right in the heart of everything. Everything was available to us. And we kind of decided that's not the life for us. That's not what we were looking for. What were we looking for? Well, here it is. But it comes with pros and cons. The cons, obviously, when you need things like furniture, it's really not available. It's really difficult to find. The same selection is just not gonna be there. And that's the same with electronics. We tried to find a 4K TV to use as a monitor here, and all of the TVs that are available, the highest seem to be uh, 1080p, which on a computer isn't very good. Uh, so those kind of things, first world problems, I get it. But uh, you know, in, in the city would have been no problem at all. We would have been able to find anything that we were looking for. Uh, pretty simply, uh, to be very honest. Um, so when we first arrived here in the Philippines, we decided we were going to go to the big cities first because we had a very good idea that we did not want to live in a big city. And we went to Angeles City. That was the first stop. It's, it's one of those places where all tourists want to go to Angeles City and check it out. Uh, I understand it's not the old Angeles City. It is the post-pandemic. Angeles City and uh, so it's not gonna have that same flavor uh, that you might have expected but it was a lot of fun and we had a great time um, a lot of action stuff going on all the time but there's not a lot of quiet time there uh, where you can just relax and there certainly is no beach and we did travel around Clark a bit too and it's got major developments there very first world uh, type construction taking place everywhere again kind of trying to get away from that whole first world life plus you can't live here on a budget if you're gonna live um, the high life it's just not gonna happen uh, but then we went down to Manila and Manila uh, you can still get things very economically but there is a lot of people a lot of people but what comes with a lot of people is conveniences. Any type of food you're looking for, probably not gonna be a problem. Full-blown large grocery stores, malls, oh, wow. They have so many beautiful malls there in Manila. We were also right by Pasai and Makati. We're kind of like in a little corner there. And uh, so we were able to travel throughout that whole area and we could see, we could see the, the advantages of living in an area like that. You had everything available to you. We weren't far from the coast where we were staying at that point. And there are plenty of places near Manila that we could have stayed in that would have given us a little bit more of this life, but then still had the ability to travel into the city. But it was still a lot of people for us. So we decided, okay. It's costing a lot of money to travel around a lot uh, with all these suitcases and everything. We need a home base. We need to get our paperwork started for the dual citizenship. And so looking online, Boracay came out as the one of the most beautiful places in the Philippines. And we said, let's just go there. Let's see if we can find something that's affordable. And we lucked out. We really did luck out. There, there is a lot of places for rent here. Uh, but for what we were looking for, kind of our own space, like we have a house with three bedrooms and a yard and everything, that's generally going to be pretty expensive here on the island. And it's not easy to find. Uh, this is a tourist island. Everything here is geared towards tourism. And uh, also it raises the property prices quite a bit for everything. So yeah, we ended up here. We do love it here. 
But what are we doing? We're, well, we're paying a lot more money for internet. We're paying 5,000 pesos a month for something that we probably only pay two or 3,000 if we were on the city. We are paying more for food, obviously. Uh, there is only one real major grocery store uh, on the island, and we gotta pay the three, approximately three US dollars each way to go grocery shopping. And that's if we can find a scooter. We can't just get a buy a motorbike uh, secondhand or something I haven't registered her name. That's not allowed here unless you're a resident, I believe for 10 years. Um, and there is one rental company that is approved on the island, but I see there they only are renting 24 hours or four hours, 24 hours, something like that, real short term uh, because of the tourism. And right now it's busy. The island is super busy. And so there, all these tourists are keeping the tourist type businesses, including the uh, bike rental people, quite busy. And uh, they're not probably uh, as motivated to rent for long term, monthly at a reasonable rate. And I was already told here, a reasonable rate for a monthly is about 5,000 pesos, $100 a month. Um, where my understanding, it's about 2,000 pesos if you just go to the island a month. So yeah, there is gonna be some cons uh, to living on the island. Obviously the pros are pretty obvious, just looking around. You got friendly people, Hi. swimming, hello, and you have two seconds to the beach. Beautiful, beautiful beaches, super warm water. We absolutely love it here. Uh, the weather, yeah, it can be a little crazy sometime and uh, you can get the the, the heart of the typhoons and you probably won't get that if you're in Manila but uh, there's a small price to pay I think to living in a paradise type uh, location we, we also love here that there are plenty of restaurants yes they're priced probably higher than most uh, places that you'll find in the Philippines uh, but they're open late there's always people there uh, at least during tourist season we haven't been here through rainy season yet but uh, yeah so things are still open when we were in Manila about 9 10 o'clock at night there wasn't a lot of places open yeah if you went down to BGC that kind of thing the, the restaurants were open there but for the most part most places were closed by 9 uh, it was it was more you know a lot of people are working um, they live th live there and so they go to bed relatively early to get up relatively early and it's not a lot of tourists you know, if you don't have a lot of tourists, you don't get a lot of late night businesses. Uh, there is no delivery per se. I believe there's a couple people that uh, have a motorbike and they offer picking up and delivering a few things here on the island. But it's not like uh, where you can just use your phone and order from a dozen different restaurants or a hundred different restaurants and have them deliver it to you. That's not a thing here also. But there are plenty of ways if you meet meet people and make connections where they'll deliver food right to your door um, and uh, usually it's them personally they'll cook it themselves and they'll literally bring it right to you so there are some ways around these type of things but for the most part convenience you know you live in a city you're gonna have more convenience the downfall of living in the city is you are on top of a lot of people there's people everywhere you're gonna have probably higher crime rates uh, I don't even think I have to look up the stats to know that because I see almost nothing here crime-wise. Even traffic accidents here on the island, nobody can go over 20, 25 kilometers an hour. It's just not possible. There, there's just too many of the scooters and the e-trikes out here that that's just not a thing. And you'll notice there's, people don't wear helmets here on the island, not even the police motorcycles, uh, because the speeds here are so slow, there's really no accidents. Uh, I think we saw one time where two bikes kind of t-boned each other but they didn't really do much damage of any kind and certainly nobody was hurt certainly living in a city you're not going to have the ability to say you know what i'm just going to go scuba diving and walk just five minutes outside of your house and find a guy to take you out and go scuba diving <laughs> that's just not going to happen uh, but here in paradise no problem very easy to do island living is so much slower as well People just move at a different pace here. There isn't no rush, rush. Oh my goodness, gotta get things done. That, that's just not very common here. If you're paying somebody uh, based on a specific job and when they finish, they get an exact amount, well, they're probably gonna work harder and faster for you. But for the most part, everything here is how we, we used to say in Costa Rica, a manana, eh, tomorrow, tomorrow. You know, just 
just relax. And you're gonna have to do that if you're ordering in Lazada or I guess Amazon, but Amazon, my understanding is quite a bit longer. Uh, we'll order from something from uh, Lazada and it takes about three weeks to get here. Regular mail, just coming from Canada to here, I say regular mail, it still costs about $100. It's still a courier, but it'll take about three weeks to arrive here. So things take a little longer, but you just, you know, you have to relax along with the relaxing atmosphere. You can't be expecting everything very quickly here uh, or you'll be very disappointed. But we don't mind it. We put up with it. You know, everybody would like to get things a little faster, especially if you just bought something online. You obviously wanted it now, but uh, you, you know, it's not not that big of a deal. It's a small inconvenience. We we just love it here, so we're we're okay with uh, the small inconveniences that uh, we run into. Do we one day probably want to relocate? Yeah. As of now, we are considering that we'll probably want to live near maybe Cebu City, um, but still live down the coast a bit so we can be on the beach and be able to just drive over. We don't have to take a ferry and get a QR code to come and come back. And, you know, there's some things about living in Boracay that, that uh, can take a little more effort in order to move around. The airport is really close though. And it would literally take about 10, 15 minutes, assuming the boat is there ready to take you across uh, to go to the airport. So that is a, a very convenient part about Boracay, having an airport right on the other side. So for those who are looking for something more relaxing, something that is almost like you're on vacation, but you could still uh, work online at, or you can, you know, if you were a Filipino, you could get a job here and live a slower, more comforting type of life. Island life might be for you. If you are fast paced, you love having a lot of things going on all the time and you want the opportunities that come with having a big city, well, island life probably won't be great for you. But uh, for us, we're loving it. We enjoy it and uh, we highly, highly recommend it. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you click like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.